That's the idea. If you're pulling airplanes up close, <laughs> you, 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 you had your oh, my, you had my, my hand on the room. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's um, call to order the December 10, 2015, Tulsa Airport Improvement Trust Special Meeting. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the November 12, 2015, Special Meeting of Change. So moved. So I can all in favor? Aye. Uh, I'm not going to skip it this morning. Carl will go right to, I don't know who's first, but receive and file operating reports. I'm first. Alexa Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, a couple of things going on. We have a new, it's not a new tree, it's the same old tree, but we refreshed the decorations. <laughs> Our decorations were like 14 years old, and so we did nature this year. You can't really see it in the picture, but with beautiful, it looks really pretty out there with the scissor toe statue out there. We've gotten a lot of compliments. We've tried to secure the ornaments because we're afraid some of them might disappear, but um, we've gotten a lot of good feedback from our tenants especially who appreciate having a little bit of decoration this holiday season. So um, right before Thanksgiving, we opened the new parking lot. And I just, Jeff and I are going to go through this a little bit. This is in response to um, the garage construction project. You know, we're going to be taking spots away. And we don't want to be in a position where we have to turn customers away because we don't have spaces for them. So as you're on the main airport entrance road to your right, yes. there used to be an employee lot there. We relocated the employees to another parking area. And this has opened up about 232 spaces. And it's a self-serve lot, basically. You want to get the expectation that you're going to walk from here to the terminal. As it turns out, our shuttle drivers still provide some service if they're available um, to pick people up. But then it's credit card only exit. So when you leave, you put your credit card in the machine, you never talk to a person. Um, and this kind of gives you an idea um, as to where it's located in reference to the other lots. But what we're doing is we're preparing for this January when we're really going to start feeling the impact of the parking garage expansion project. And um, this kind of gives you an idea. The first phase is going to start next week um, with the demolition of a crosswalk up on the A side. Um, it's going to only take a week, right, Jeff? Yeah. The, well, they'll be in there working from there on. So they're going to this a location where they're going to be building new elevators and stairs and all. But the demolition, yes, probably yeah. about a week. Um, and so there's another crosswalk just to the west that the, the public can use. Our big concern is making sure people know how to get down to the rental cars. And if people want to use an elevator, they'll have to go down to the center. So we're working on getting the signs up so everybody understands how to navigate that space. The next big change is going to be January 11th, and um, for the construction project, they're actually going to take the left lane of the Rivals Roadway. They're going to need that lane for staging equipment and for construction, so there will only be two lanes available for cars and one lane available for people to load. And because of that, we're going to go to an active loading only um, situation on the curb. Right now, we let people park for three minutes on the curb and wait for passengers. But because there was only going to be that one lane available, it's going to be very congested. We want to keep people moving. And January 11th, we're going to switch over to that new policy. Um, we have uh, we have a cell phone. Yes. Uh, it's right there, just uh, south of the new cell phone. Uh, yeah. It, right. So and, that will be kind of critical. Yes. Um, so our law enforcement officers have a flyer that we've created that will show people at the curb that they can hand out and say, this is how you can get to free parking in the cell phone lot, and this is how you can turn around and park in the short-term parking if you want to actually come into the terminal wait for your guests. We've expanded this cell phone lot. We did earlier this year, like, tripled its capacity, I think, so mm -hmm. maybe quite a bit bigger in anticipation <laughs> of this coming. So. Right. So I think that's going to be critical. It's just making sure people understand that they do have options still. And um, in January, we'll do a pretty big um, effort to communicate that to people so that they're aware of it before they come to the airport. And then it's actually January 20th. We've yeah. moved it back a couple of days. But that's when the rental cars are going to relocate to the upper level behind the canopies. 
Um, and that's a pretty big move for them. Of course, we want to make sure that the signs and everything in the terminal and outside are directing people correctly. Um, and then that's also when work will begin on the very east end of the garage. And they're not going to just take the whole area over um, and then there will be empty spaces. As they progress on the work, they're going to start from the east end and work their way west. And so we'll be taking spaces over gradually. But did I leave anything else? Oh, you okay. Thank you. So people can park there when it's not being built on, and then as they move, then they'll just close. Right. Yeah. Once we as we close, of course, it'll be down until it's like in May when that corner is scheduled to be done, and of course we'll be opening a bunch of that up again. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted you guys to know because I'm guessing people will talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. So, January and February it. are usually our slower months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, okay. Are you going to, because I'm going to be in here after the 13th or so January for like a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have notices of, oh, by the way, if you park here yes. five yeah. days from now, somebody's going to come. Sledgehammer, you <laughs> <laughs> we'll politely relocate. <laughs> uh, but yes, we, we've we got one day march. Yeah, <laughs> so yes, we, we did that. Uh, we had signs like that uh, before we started the most recent step in the area around letting folks well, know. Get people to the long term. Yeah. I mean, they're here for a couple of three weeks. Right. Sure that. Yeah. Um, the next thing I just want to give you an update on is our advertising program. Um, we officially started, or we officially took over July 1st, and we've already committed to 276000 in contract revenue. Um, our goal for the whole year was 298000 So we're almost to our goal, which is good. I think we are going to exceed that without question. Um, I wanted to also let you know, as far as expenses, we've spent about $40,000 on the hotel phone boards, which are now called hotel passenger convenience centers. <laughs> um, and we've had to buy a lot of tension fabric displays. I mean, Clear Channel took everything with them. And so our budgeted amount for that was 50000 I don't think we're going to hit the 50000 this year, but I'm, I'm really pleased with the work that Kim has done. Um, Kim Keeler is our advertising sales manager. She's in the back there. But um, she, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been a great effort between James Rockhold with IT helping us. Um, we rely on Jack to change out several of the digital ads for us. Our building maintenance staff are helping us look for lighting. Um, so it's been a group effort. But last year, our revenue um, was about one hundred and twenty-one thousand. That was our take of the revenue. So this year, I, we've already exceeded that once you even subtract out expenses. So it's going well. We've added 14 new locations. Um, I have a handout here. I don't want to forget to share that with you because you can put that together. But it lists on the back page all of our customers. And um, we've been really good at retaining a good portion of them. Um, some of the hotel customers we're working on getting on board because the hotel boards weren't ready right off the bat. Um, we lost a few of them, but now that they're there, I think she'll fill that up rather quickly. So, um, the last thing, or next to last thing, I just wanted to highlight was our DBE program um, for fiscal year 15, which is the federal fiscal year. Our goal is 4.3 percent, and we achieved 5.6 percent participation. The Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program. Um, required. It's required by the, the FAA for any um, construction or any project that receives AIP funding. So it's it's primarily impacted on airfield projects, both at Riverside and Tulsa. Uh, we did have a lot of projects that we awarded this year. But I think it was around two and a half million dollars for the federal fiscal year. But um, to some place that we achieved our goal. Um, for closeouts, we had 8% participation for last year. And that's primarily because of the runway project that was closed out 
in the last federal fiscal year. I have a question. About, does the government have give you a specific percentage of projects that you, you have to have, or is this, you, don't you determine the goal kind of together? Well, there's a whole methodology for setting goals, and it's based on the availability of contractors in your area that have the qualifications for the services you need. So we, we set a goal every few years. There's a, um, a goal setting workshop that we have with industry, and we look at the availability of contractors in our area for the types of projects that we have coming up, and that's how the goals are set. So. And <coughs> there we have Brian Cook, who is our Above and Beyond Employee of the Month. He's the Building Maintenance Supervisor. And he was nominated and selected for his role in really managing the tower project. Um, he worked closely with the FAA and supervised his employees over there while also supervising his staff over here. He, he jokes that the reason he has great hair is because he worked on that project. <laughs> but um, he, he really has a great uh, approach, and I think it really helped us um, in communicating with their staff during that project. So, why did you mention that? Because I he didn't have great hair. That's a lot of your job. Yeah. And that's my report. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much. Congratulations, Brian. And I just want to say for you, and, uh, to the folks putting here the advertising, that you are killing it. Yep. Great job. That's, that's really tremendous. Thank you. I'll second that. Uh, on the uh, finance and admin front, uh, actually have. Uh, <coughs> Uh, good information. The plane passengers uh, for November, uh, nice little bump, almost 6% on the uh, for the month. Uh, still pretty flat for the year, but the month of November really, uh, really stood out. You had made a comment about some feedback, Carl, on that, because we were, were curious how we would do in November, because it was, I think, a year ago that we lost our Southwest, some of our Southwest flights because of the right amendment when they restructured everything mm -hmm. down slow. But you had some feedback. Well, it, it's anecdotal, so we don't know how much, but uh, concessionaires were telling us they had a great weekend with the Route 66 Marathon. And I know, uh, going down there to the convention center, how full it was mm -hmm. and how the, uh, the, the, uh, the race organizer said it was uh, uh, maxed out. I mean, all, all the uh, slots were filled. They could, uh, so uh, they had to turn people away, actually, who wanted to run. But uh, it's a great weekend. Uh, he said uh, he saw a lot of runners, as opposed to the bike bikers who don't come through the airport with their bikes. Uh, <laughs> the runners did come through the airport, so it's kind of kind of good. Now, whether or not that's the reason, I, I assume weather and, and ticket prices and gas and everything else that goes in. <coughs> what what you do in November, especially over Thanksgiving holidays and everything else, but. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it was a nice little bump. So. If we qualified for the, the ride in the exploration, if we qualified for the passion of the train at all. Well, yeah, in, in the uh, in the hand in the attachments, we break down per airline. And actually, Southwest is not, um, they didn't drop as much as I thought they would have, so they must have, they must have some fuller airplanes. So. Um, month by month, um, they're actually not that far from what they had last November. Yeah. But, uh, the immediate impact was we lost, what, three flights? I three think. frequencies, yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, it's, I thought we'd have a larger drop uh, because of that, but obviously the other airlines have added. Uh, so, you've had some passengers move to them. Southwest is still about a third? No. The, yeah, they are still. <clears throat> Uh, on the cargo front, it uh, shows an increase, uh, almost 4% for the month, almost 3% uh, year to date, so that's fairly steady. Uh, operations, uh, down, uh, down a little bit, uh, 15%. Of course, we're, we still got some runway construction out there, and, uh, uh, and this really is, is telling uh, the airlines are good. Uh, and the itinerant uh, GA is good. It's the military and, uh, and the uh, base GA that, uh, that 
that stuff down quite a bit. And, and Riverside Carl, the quick Jeff may just brief the board. It's not on the agenda necessarily, but for our edge like project, where we stand up. Right. Next. And we're down to just the last week or two to, to finish up uh, some work. The, the actual uh, lighting out on the runway itself has been burning now for, golly, about three weeks, I guess. Uh, so they're in the process of getting all of the old lighting removed. There's still some circuitry work that they need to do, replacing a bunch of the old wiring and all, but uh, the the new lights themselves are in their new position and burning, and we're all but finished with the project. Good deal. <laughs> and Riverside, I don't know if you have inside of Riverside, some work going on down there. The well, and the, that, that hurt us some. The taxiway alpha reconstruction project that we did uh, over the last month, you know, we had about three or so weeks of having the main taxiway shut down. We, we actually discouraged folks, asked them, Go somewhere else for a while. I mean, it's just too congested uh, for that period of time. So a lot of the flight training activity that we would normally see, uh, the, the schools just you know they're still based here, but instead of doing all their takeoffs and landings, they go to some other airport to do those kind of things. So that that had a pretty big uh, impact on it, but that should bounce right back. So. Uh, parking uh, so the well the. That percentage is not correct. The parking actually is up, uh, so I, I need to correct that percentage. Um, but uh, we showed a bump in November, and the activity showed uh, a similar bump, so in, uh, consistent with the inflamers. Uh Pike Pass, nice, nice increase there. I think that percentage is. Yeah, but that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, percentage doesn't look right. No, it doesn't. Uh, so I, 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 for some reason, I need to I did update that cell. So uh, I apologize for that. Uh, valet, nice. Uh, uh, continue. This is our little niche market that keeps growing and growing. So. <coughs> uh, rental car revenues. Uh, now, the, these next slides we were. Uh, Delayed a month, so what you're seeing is, is the October information here. So this is consistent with what we reported last week, last month on the uh, on the other activity that we did have uh, October information on. And so this is pretty consistent with uh, the October numbers. Uh, rental car transactions stays so while they're down slightly. Uh, you can see October is one of our busiest months. Um, and then uh, here's the fuel, the uh, gross fuel and the net fuel. And then at Riverside, uh, we show a bump. I assume some of that flight training activity, since we're based here, they, right, they actually fuel here. So uh, that's probably reflective of that. Uh, going on the finance side, uh, revenues are uh, looking good. We're above uh, where we had budgeted. Uh, bit over half a million dollars is uh, uh, for where we're at, 1.6% over budgeted revenues. Operating expenses were a little bit over budget, but uh, you know we had some uh, some expenses that uh, we had a, a lawsuit settlement. We had some other things, so we're, uh, we think that this is uh, coming back in line. It's a lot less of a deficit than what we saw the first four months. So we think this is coming back down. And then uh, we've got all the cash balances. This shows the, the breakdown of that. And the liquidity is getting back up again. Uh, the 290, I think, is up about 20 days from what it was last month. So uh, we're looking fairly well there. And then uh, disbursements and on. Again, there's you've got some tabs uh, uh, in your packet there with the detail, and if you have any questions on any of the specific items, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to to explain those. And I think that's it. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Yep. Carl has Carl. A, yes a two B. Uh, 2B is to amend the uh, uh, current 
fiscal year to schedule a break fees and charges uh, to complete two items. Uh, these two items we've actually uh, uh, been, been, been charging, and then it, it was pointed out they were not on our schedule, and so we're, we, uh, we decided we probably need to either stop charging them or put them on, on the schedules so that uh, you can approve them. Uh, $10 replacement fee for tenant employee parking permits. Uh, uh, we find out that there's quite an administrative effort to, to do that. And so uh, the $10 is to offset some of the some, some of the costs related to that. And then a $25 return check fee. And, and again, these are activities that, that staff has to spend time on and, and it seems like uh, imposing a fee might encourage compliance rather than uh, uh, and plus it compensates us a bit for, for our effort. So we would uh, recommend approval. Any motion? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, then uh, 2C is amendment number one to agreement for uh, professional services with uh, ICM and uh, And this is just to extend the group, uh, agreement for one year. We we approved them as a consultant uh, uh, to help us develop our uh, uh, concession program, and uh, they've been doing a really good job. And, and, and uh, we, uh, we looked at it; they're, they're within scope. They're still within the budget. Uh, they're, they're moving forward, and so we would like to extend this uh, agreement for a year. Uh, this program should be in place by January of 17. So this allows them to oversee that implementation, and then I don't suspect we will need them uh, after that. But uh, they've been we're real impressed with them. They're doing a real good job. So, so our new concession program would be January, the year from this January? January of 17, right. right. There will probably be a selection, uh, we think, in this summer, mm -hmm. upcoming summer, late summer, uh, and then a transition period. And like to have the new program in place by January. This is the people we that interviewed us individually. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I move approval for two C. Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, <coughs> okay. Nice. Like up. Yep. The next, I'm going to ask Frank Relcher to come up and present uh, these next four items. If we can take them all together, they're actually all related to uh, just some of the general. Uh, service contracts for the facility side of the house, so I'll, just, I'll let Frank go through those four together, if you don't mind. Great. Good morning. Um, item 2G is to approve the second of four one-year options uh, to extend the term of agreement with Nature's Alpine Solutions Industrial, uh, which is a de-icing chemical, and the amount of uh, not to exceed $77,000. This provides the FAA-approved the icing chemical we use in the real payments. Right. So just where do we stand today? I think we do we're full, correct? We're, we're full. We have two ten thousand gallon tanks. We got both full. And um, so this will provide approximately fourteen thousand gallons additional for airport T U L and approximately twenty two hundred gallons for Riverside. Can you only buy it if you need it? Right. One to me, approve the fourth of four one year options to extend the term of agreement. Term of the agreement with uh, CRTS LLC or GMG Lawn and Landscape Incorporated. Uh, this is the amount not to exceed $20,000. <coughs> uh, this provides two contractors that we can call for aid in the landside snow removal. They will provide equipment and operators, and the airport staff will direct them, and it's just on the other side. Land side. Excuse me. Land side. Yeah. yeah. There's air over there, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Yeah, we, we haven't used this at all. It's, only, it's been a standby thing that, fingers crossed, we haven't needed it. But. I don't know. We got called down in the paper. Yeah, well, didn't have <laughs> Maybe we should have called. Yeah. <laughs> um, item 2S is to four linear options to extend the term of 
agreement with Lyle Blakely in the amount of $15 per acre to be paid to the airport annually. This contract provides for a hay harvesting or hay cutting service of approximately 400, excuse me, 540 acres of um, land that is not on the AOA. Those are the green areas on the, on the drawing up there. Um, the contract will pay Tate an estimated $8,750.50 per year for the service and they retain the hay that they bale. Um, and the contract identifies that they shall cut through these, these areas at least one time per year. And the last item is 2G, approve the first of four one-year options to extend the term of the grant to G and G Guam and Landscape Incorporated in the amount now to exceed $122,594. And this is a contract that basically provides grass mowing services for the land side of the airport. And uh, management recommends approval of all four items. Sorry. Hi. 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 2H. Uh, James, is that one? Um, this is for our FID system, James. Okay. Yes. Uh, 2H uh, award contract to Impact Inc. for the Flight Information Display System project in an amount not to exceed $126,000. This is the system for all the flight displays, baggage displays, and weather displays throughout the airport. Um, current contract is expired in February, so we're awarding this one to replace the system. And I will add in that by replacing the system, combining the system with weather, and doing some bag and technical stuff that you don't care about, <laughs> that we're actually reducing annual costs by about $38,000. Uh, so, it's got a good payback period on, which is unusual for IT systems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As far as proposals, with that several. Like, yeah, we had five different proposals, and this was the lowest cost for year one and going forward with years of maintenance. This was, is the hardware. Uh, this is some hardware. It's not yeah. replacing monitors. Oh, okay. but it's replacing computers yeah. in the back end. Yeah. 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 Okay. Such a verbal CS. Not like if you want tires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. I do have approval for 2H. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I'm glad that we'll be able to sell advertising on the new FIDS too. Yeah, and so there's also revenue potential as well. Just saying. Just want to put that in. She's got her little notepad up. That's all right. <laughs> okay. No more Lexus. Okay, item 2 is 2 Approve the license agreement with Tulsa Spotlighters Inc. for display space in the baggage claim areas. This is the theater where the drunker is from. America's longest running play, I think is their tagline. But basically, in baggage claim right above the baggage carousels, we have advertising space um, that is not sold. It's, it's display space. And the agreement with them is that they can put an ad in each baggage claim area, but if we sell it, then it goes away. So they understand that, and that's outlined in the agreement, but they're very excited about being out here. So. Okay. 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 Item 2J is to prove the acceptance of a donation from the Arts and Humanities Council of Tulsa in the amount of $10,700. Um, both 2J and 2K are really together. We have the sculpture garden that we've been working on for over a year now that's located out along the Rivals Roadway between Baggage Claim A and the rental car areas. And um, basically, through the help of Ken Levitt, Ken Busby, several different people, um, some on our cultural advisory group, Ken Levitt's not, but he's gone out and raised funds from um, contacts in the community that want to honor Dr. Simon Levitt. And these funds have been used to reimburse the airport for the cost of the sidewalk um, that was put in. So um, there were individual donors that donated to an account at the Arts and Humanities Council. Those funds were tagged for the airport sculpture garden. And then the same is true with item 2K, which um, I can take those items separately if we need to. But item 2K is to approve the acceptance of a donation from the Tulsa Community Foundation in the amount of $3,550. And again, it was used for the sidewalk, and it was they were funds that were received from private donors that were specifically for the sculpture garden. 
So yeah. I can take those together right now. Yeah. Move approval of two J and two K. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Um, we definitely need to work on landscaping, and I have a few recommendations. For, we're looking for sustainable, low-maintenance landscaping. So that's on our to-do list. We have signs that we want to put up both on the inside of the building and on the outside of the building so people can learn more about the purpose of the sculpture garden and the artists. And we also want to do lighting. Those are the three big things. So. Definitely more work to be done, and then once that's complete, we're going to have an opening event, like a dedication. So. I haven't been there at night. Do we have lighting on the pieces yet? No. Okay. Okay. Still to come. Okay. So we'll, we'll finish with that. Thank you, Alexis. Jeff Morgan. Yep, uh, I'll start and i have Nancy jump in. Uh, Received proposed update to amendment to minimum standards for RL Jones to Airport. <laughs> So I think Nancy provided a copy. It's it's 50 pages, but I, I would ask you just to start at page three, which is where the pertinent piece that we're adding. And so the intent is, um, as we've been dealing with this issue um, over the last year or two, at least, um, we just thought it would be good to go into our documents and clarify, specify, make sure everyone completely understands, you know, what we're trying to accomplish there. And so the, the area, the, the, the colored language there talks about um, um, what operators uh, are licensed to do, non-aeronautical activities, and we specifically say um, aircraft salvage and demanufacturing. Aircraft are not permitted and will not be licensed. So. Uh, I think that's the bulk of it. There's a couple other things in the document, and I'll certainly, if Nancy wants to identify those. Um, on page 25, there's another area that we've added some language to that uh, under the heading of aeronautical activity that we've identified um, what areas are not aeronautical. Um, 25. Which includes aircraft salvage and demanufacturing. So, Nancy, Hall, anything else you wanted to add to that? that the the nice. others are housekeeping. Um, we still had some references to the Tulsa Airport Authority and Tulsa Airport Authority staff. So we took this opportunity to um, clear all that up. And next month, I'll be bringing you the TUL update. Uh, the language in uh, aeronautical activity on page 25, um, we added <coughs> the aircraft salvage and or demanufacturing um, to language that is in federal aviation regulations and definition of the aeronautical activity in the FAA compliance handbook. And so <coughs> we are, um, <coughs> excuse me. We are modeling this after um, the case I previously discussed with you, which is a Part 16 decision, which said these were not aeronautical activities. So uh, that's our backup for uh, making these amendments. And um, you also added in regards to window irrigations. Oh, and yeah, the, the notifications is just due to the fact that. Um, 23 and 24. Um, yeah. it, it's a long one, but it, it is just because we have tenants who sometimes refuse to accept their certified mail. Um, <clears throat> and so we wanted to clarify how we can um, give appropriate notice to the tenants without um, dealing with returned mail. And, um, and we have been sending it priority mail with proof of delivery and certified mail. Um, recently, a, a tenant refused that certified mail, but he got the priority mail and the email. So um, it looks long and, and different, but it's very uh, simple. And it's just to receive. And this is right. just so I'd, I'd move uh, approval for 2L to receive proposed amendment amendment standards. Okay, and next month, then we'll bring them back to you for approval. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Nancy. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, item 3A1 is to approve uh, acknowledgement and consent with intercom services uh, to exercise the second of four one year options to extend the term of the contract we have with them for uh, environmental engineering and consulting services. Uh, the amount is uh, not to exceed $25,000. It's on call if we need them to assist us with any environmental issues that might come up. It's actually been several years since we've had to use this contract. It's just it's one of those, if we need it, though, we need to have that support available. So we recommend approval. Okay. All right. Uh, item uh, 3B1. Yeah, some coming in there, don't we? yeah, let's start maybe with the easier one yeah. first. Is that 3B1 by itself? And then we, we may take the next two together. But uh, item 3B1 is to approve a contract for design services. Uh, this will be with Craft and Tall and Associates, a local architect, in an amount not to exceed $43,050. This is for the Spartan Roofs project. Um, and it, it's for the, uh, the little complex of buildings that they have just west of the terminal building. Uh, they're buildings that we own, uh, that they lease uh, and maintain. Um, we're in the process of working a, a lease modification with them uh, that will actually have us making some, doing some improvements for them that then basically are being financed through the lease. I guess. Sure. 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 Right. And, yeah. and they're covered yeah. by the lease. Yeah. So and we'll, we'll, we'll recover the cost of this yeah. to, yeah. the, to the rental. Yeah, this is the design for it. We'll have a big package out here in you know, two or three months. We'll award a contract. All of that will move really <coughs> through uh, this lease amendment. Do you know what kind of activity so. they do in those buildings? It's all their A&P. A&P, yes, I thought. Yeah, right. It's been a while. Aircraft yeah. maintenance, right? Yeah. 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 So, okay. move approval for 3B1. So, all in favor. Aye. All right. And if we can, we might take 3B2 and 3 really together. Uh, this actually started as one project that uh, uh, we bid and rejected the one bid that we received here a couple of months ago. Uh, in an attempt to try and get better prices, we uh, split it into two. Uh, I'll go through it here in just a minute, but we were not successful. We still wound up with just one bid, and the prices, for all practical purposes, are the same as what we got before. In fact, in some cases, maybe even just a, a smidge higher. Um, item 3B2 is uh, to acknowledge receipt of bid, and this is for the building's roof repair project with Southeast Tulsa Construction, uh, the amount of $951,860.34. And this is just acknowledging receipts. You're not taking action on it. This just, uh, it, it, uh, we have to take action to at least uh, acknowledge the receipt. Uh, that gives us another like 30 days or so to your next meeting uh, before we have to either award or reject. Um, this particular project includes um, two buildings that the, uh, uh, that the FAA leases from us. One of them is where the terminal radar approach control facility is. It's a single story building and right next to it is a generator building. Both of those need a roof. Uh, and there's three buildings we've got that, that are a part of our parking system uh, that we need to have. There. So this is kind of everything except the control tower in this particular project. Um, again, we only got one bid, same bidder as last time. Uh, 3B3, same action item would be to acknowledge receipt of bid, uh, Southeast Tulsa Construction, the amount of $768,259.11. This project is only for the control tower itself. So there's actually three roofs. It's the cab, there's a catwalk around it, and then believe it or not, there's actually a basement that has a roof. Uh, kind of an unusual <laughs> thing, but if you want to know more, I'll be glad to tell you. But it's relatively small uh, uh, roof areas. Um, I, I think our original estimate on this work was like $250,000 when we did it the first time. Um, we're probably hair low on it. But anyway, we're, we need to have some discussions with the FAA about uh, how we're going to recoup the costs of these. And if we want to do this project on the control tower, we may actually, I suspect we're going to wind up rejecting this bid uh, and pursuing a, a much cheaper temporary option um, that uh, will at least buy us a few years until we get you know, more of an idea of what's going to happen with that control tower facility. So. At this point, all you're really doing, again, just acknowledging your receipt of the bids. We'll have some more conversations amongst ourselves in the FAA and then have an action item for you in January. I want to just add a couple things. Um, <coughs> the, 
the option that Jeff mentioned that we're looking at for the control tower yeah. roof would be a spray-on application that would have a three to four or five year life. Yeah. But just something that would, you know, hold us over until we can figure out what to do. The challenge it seems is that it's the control tower is a very unique building. Um, it's at a high elevation. But we're also, I think, seeing the impact of construction activity in the Tulsa market. All of a sudden, the construction prices are high, and uh, I think it's probably his project that's messing yeah, it's it up. Yeah. But uh, that makes the parking six months. Too. Yeah, it, it, it may. Okay. But so we're looking at that that short term solution. The other challenge for us is on the other the other roofs uh, that Jeff mentioned. Is I think we've only when we started this effort the budget numbers together a year ago we put in half a million yeah. so we need to try to find some more money if we're going to have parking I mean, the parking yeah. yeah yeah so we'll yeah. actually get another look at this <coughs> next yeah. month yeah, yeah. this right. is just to accept the whole bit right. it, it just yeah. holds the bit yeah. Yeah. yeah it just holds the bit okay i approve approval that we accept the bids on 3b2 and uh, 3b3 say for no acknowledge receipt. Yeah. And that's only because state statute yeah. says on a public improvement we only have 45 days to award a contract. So. Uh, item 3C1, very similar to the one we did for Air Force Plant 3. This is to acknowledge uh, uh, or approve and acknowledge, approve acknowledgement and consent with Intercon to exercise the second of four one-year options to extend the term of the contract we had with them for on-call environmental services amount not to exceed $25,000. This is what we'll use at any of the airports uh, that, that we manage, TUL, Riverside, and <coughs> Okmulgee, if that becomes necessary. Uh, typically, we don't spend a whole lot of this. We, we generally spend in the five to maybe $10,000 range uh, each year for, with a little extra stuff helping us out with things that go on. Um, and, and we're going to stick with the $25,000 number. You all actually amended the current year's contract to bring it up to 50000 because of the control tower project. It, we spent around twenty, I think, just <coughs> dealing with all of the asbestos and the fumes and the very, all of those <coughs> different things. But uh, we're going to get and stick with the 25000 I think, is should be a reasonable amount for the year. And if something special comes up, we can always amend it. So we do recommend approval of this extension. Okay. And the uh, last one I've got for you here uh, is uh, approved change order number four. This is on the rental car ready return facility parking garage project that Crossland Construction is doing for us. The amount of this change order is six thousand five hundred and fifty nine dollars even. It does add eight additional days, uh, both for the work described here as well as some weather delays that uh, we've encountered in the last month. Uh, the, the work that we're talking about here is we had to modify some of the pier foundation designs for the new ramp that is under construction now. Turned out that the piers went right down, I mean, like that far from a 16-inch water line uh, that had to stay in operation for another couple of months or so. So we had to shift the piers over and modify the design just a little bit. So there's a little extra steel and concrete, nothing huge. But you know, that never happens at the gathering place, does it? I think it's a rule 3D1. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 4A. No. Oh. 4A is to acknowledge the consent of the Tulsa Metropolitan Ministry. This is just to exercise a fourth of four one year options. Let's uh, take through 4H if we can. Yes, that'd be fine. Yeah, so that'd be great. That's 4A. And they oversee the, uh, the chapel. 4B is to renew um, a sublease agreement with Aircraft Service International Group, EBA Aviation TLC Company. Uh, they lease some square footage and they provide the interplane fuel and they manage the fuel farm for the airline consortium. And that's just a renewal. 4C is to approve the a cargo facility sublease agreement with Quantum Aviation to lease 2,001 square feet. Standard rate, uh, effective November 23rd through February, they'll provide cargo support for uh, cargo charters. And, uh, 4D is a approved renewal of a license agreement with Griffith Aviation. This is for uh, 
James Griffin is a uh, subtenant, and uh, this is for aircraft sales acquisition consultant aircraft evaluation services. Um, so, uh, all four of those are at TUL. 4E is a renewal of a license agreement with KRT Aviation as an aviation maintenance subtenant of DEFC management. This is at Riverside. 4F is to approve renewal of a license agreement with aircraft inspection and repair, which is uh, Barry Burdensteiner. He's a subtenant of South Tulsa Hangers for one year. That again is at Riverside. 4G is to acknowledge consent to a subtenant with Christensen for the Tulsa County helicopters. And then uh, related to item 4H is a license agreement with Tulsa County helicopters. Uh, for one year at, at uh, Sandler, which is basically a uh, uh, recovery of the cost. And uh, they will be providing uh, holiday life tours. Uh, we would recommend approval of 4A through 4H. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Are some of these they have to be done? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I'll go through these. All the way to the end. I'll go next, next to the last one. <laughs> uh, for uh, I is to approve a short term sublease agreement with Security Capital Corp and Howard Aircraft Sales. This is for tie down block. Uh, 4J is to not acknowledge and consent to an assignment <coughs> as sublease. So, Lot 7, Block 9, from CSL Inc., which is Tom Quinn, to Bluefin Investments, which is James L. Clark. 4K is a similar item, but for Lot 5, on Block 9, uh, Tom Quinn, to Bluefin. Uh, 4L is to acknowledge and consent with J. Spence Aviation. Uh, this is Lot 7, Block 1A in the Northwest Hangar area to exercise the second of two by your options. 4M is to acknowledge and consent with Richard uh, Curley, Lot 4, Block 1C, Northwest Hangar Area, to exercise the second of two by your options. And 4N is to acknowledge and consent with Thomas uh, Goodman and Deborah Goodman, uh, trustees. Uh, this is lot two, block sixteen, to exercise the first of two five-year options. Which we would recommend approval of four I to four N. So, okay. uh, discussion. Oh yes. Uh, I through M. Are we jumping ahead of ourselves on N? On N. Oh no. Got my oh, okay. Yeah, it did different. Yeah, I had the same order last night. For my motion stand. Motion stand. Your second stance now on. Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Mr. For a, a disclosure for our progress made with clear default notices in Southwest Aviation Specialties. Um, Jeff Hoff and I met with uh, Southwest Aviation a couple weeks ago. Uh, and um, with the timeline that he was given, he indicated to us that he didn't feel he could comply in that time period. Um, there's no action to be taken today. I mean, this is just a status update. Uh, the, just as a reminder, what we gave him to was uh, 60 days, which is January 11, I think it is, Nancy. Yes. Um, the other part is that um, Jeff and his staff have been working on um, other compliance things uh, such as the construction activity in uh, an aircraft that we, we've asked him to address. And uh, we did engage the city um, as far as uh, it took some time because they were trying to figure out, you know, this was something they hadn't done before and it took a while for them to get back to us and uh, figure out the process. But you met with the city inspector yesterday right. and he's looked at some of the stuff and so um, we've got that them engaged. and. Anything else at this point, Jeff? So, okay. In the city, that's the citation, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it, it, right. Well, just maybe explain exactly. Right. So it's a yeah. I mean, it's, it's a code, it's a code enforcement. So yes. just like they would deal with any other code enforcement issue around, you know, trash at a house or whatever kind of. They the same folks.
folks that would be dealing with this for us. So yeah, he was out yesterday, took some pictures and all, and so yeah, that's moving forward. Okay. So do we need to do anything with that? No, we just wanted to provide an update at this point. Okay. Any other business or comments at this point? I'd like to recess for the TAA meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, I don't know if we needed that, but we need it. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right, yeah. It all feels. I followed your lead, guys. Okay. okay, so let's call and order the uh, December 10, 2015 meeting with the Tulsa Airport Authority. I need an approve, um, a motion to approve the minutes of the November 12, 2015 meeting of TAA. So moved. So again, all in favor? Aye. 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 No other business, right? No. Um, I need a, a motion to approve those items from the December 10, 2015 special meeting of TAPE, which should be considered by TAA. So moved. So all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, uh, we've got like 30 seconds. I'm just in awe. <laughs> okay, we'll reconvene the, the TAPE meeting. Um, I need a motion to approve those items from the December 10, 2015 meeting of TAA, which should be considered by TAPE. So moved. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve an executive session, Salute. please. Salute. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I need to make a copy of something. Oh, I thought you were going to say good. Yep. Give me just a minute. Sure. Mr. Mulder will return. This is the fastest tag to the mother. You guys are sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, returning um, after executive session, no action required. As a result of the executive session, I need a motion to adjourn the tape meeting. So moved. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. All right. Merry okay, Christmas. Go play Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs>